Let's consider what happens when an X and Y electric field oscillation get varied in their relative phases. Here's an animation that shows you what the X component, uh, sorry, the Y component of an electric field alone looks like when it animates in time. Just pushes upwards and downwards in time. And similarly, if I animate just the X component of an electric field, it'll look something like this. You see in both cases, here we've got a unit amplitude oscillation from left to right. In the other case, we had a unit amplitude oscillation from up to down. Now what gets interesting is when we start to phase them relative to each other. So first of all, let's add them together in phase. One X hat plus one Y hat with no relative phase. Then I get a resultant vector that looks like this. We've still got that vertical oscillation, the horizontal oscillation that will stay that way throughout the rest of this video. But now you see the resultant vector goes up and down at 45 degrees. Now, if I were to try to pass that electric field through a polarizer, and if that polarizer passed light like this polarization, so that it sort of gets through if it oscillates this way, then this polarizer would pass 100% of this electric field. And so over here, I'll sketch that electric field oscillation like this. Now I can vary the electric field of x relative to y. If I just make a slight electric field modification here, I'm not changing how much x oscillation there is, and I'm not changing how much y oscillation there is. So that's important to keep in mind. These amplitudes are exactly the same. I haven't eliminated any x field or any y field. I've just changed their relative phases. But you can see that this now sweeps out a path that looks like this oval. So let me write the oval over here. So the oval looks something like that. And you can see now that if I passed that light field through this polarizer, there would be certain points at the extremes where the electric field is very strongly oriented along the polarizer, but there are other times when it's pointed less perfectly, and there are actually some points along here where it's pointing opposite to the polarizer and none of that light will get through. So I've now reduced how much light can get through this polarizer only by changing the phase of these oscillations. I haven't reduced the X power or the Y power on its own, but when it goes through the polarizer, the amount of power that gets through that has changed. I can, of course, continue this process. I can make that phase shift a quarter cycle. 0.5 is one fourth as much as two, and I'm multiplying that by pi. So this is pi over two. And when I play that, I get a circular polarization. So now I've got something that looks like this. That will be my cartoon for this path you see on the outside there. And now this is a circle. It has no preferred direction. It is spending just as much time oriented, the electric field is spending just as much time oriented parallel to these slats as it is perpendicular to these slats. Every part that's a little bit off from the slats is equal to a part that's almost that much perpendicular to the slats. So I hope you'll agree that the circular polarization state, only half of its power ought to get through this linear polarizer. So again, by rephasing, I'm changing how much power gets through the polarizer. And the most extreme case of all is if I increase this phase shift to pi, now what you see is that this resultant electric field actually is pointing in this downward direction to the right and upward to the left. And this case now is exactly the opposite of this. I've actually switched the polarization completely from one linear state to the orthogonal linear state, and now none of that power will get through the polarizer. So the point of this exploration is to convince you that without changing the amount of x or y oscillation, and without changing the amount of total power in this beam if it were to strike my eye without going through a polarizer, I am nevertheless able by changing phase to very much influence how much light gets to my eye if, it, if the light then has to pass through a polarizer. And that's exactly how a liquid crystal display works. You apply a phase shift between one component of the light field and the other, and without doing anything else, if you then pass that light through a polarizer, you can very much change how much light gets out.